Hello people, in this video let us look at retinal vein occlusion, CRVO, CR, uh, BRVO. So retinal vein occlusion, two types are there, central or branch. Okay, so what are they talking about here? So you can have under retinal vein, it can be the central retinal vein which is occluded, under which you can have non-ischemic or ischemic and you have branch retinal vein occlusion. So let us look at where the central retinal vein is. Here you can see in the blue, the central retinal vein, right? Uh, basically the blood goes into the veins isn't it so the vein is supposed to drain out now here you can see this got occluded so what will happen it will not be able to drain kind of a thing right so you will see in this uh, very easily to remember you can remember this image this is a uh, uh, see uh, splashed tomato uh, kind of an image this is so much of blood kind of what you're seeing okay let us look at this one then you have branch retinal vein some branch only is getting occluded but central is important for the exam. Now, why is this happening? Because um, basically there is a uh, there is a vein, right? There is a vein. Now, on this vein, there is an artery, okay? Or wherever there is an artery and uh, there is some crossing, right? This artery is full of atherosclerosis. So, what happens? This artery is putting pressure on the vein. So, the vein will get occluded. And the where and all will you see all this standard blame hypertension, diabetes mellitus, um, hyperviscosity of the blood, hyperlipidemia. Then it is also, it's also possible in people who have raised intraocular pressure, people who have some tumor. So remember to blame tumors, cancer and all that. Okay. So because of all this, what will happen? The vein will get occluded. Now coming to uh, central retinal vein occlusion. This is what we want to look at, right? Central retinal vein, if it's occluded, this is main for exam. Branch and all small things you can remember. Now, in the central retinal vein occlusion, you have non ischemic and ischemic, correct? Now, non ischemic, what are they telling here? It is also called as venous stasis retinopathy. Venous stasis retinopathy means, see here you can see the uh, veins, right? They are so torturous, torturous. So, the veins are kind of having stasis of blood. So here you can see tortuosity. So there is mild venous condition in the beginning and tortuosity and there can be superficial flame shaped hemorrhages in the periphery. Initially guys there is uh, you know there is um, no macular edema then later stages they are talking about uh, cystoid edema and retinal hemorrhages they can be partly absorbed. These uh, hemorrhages can partly be absorbed also. What uh, did you learn here? So here what they are writing in characteristically non-ischemic CRVO, there will be mild to moderate visual loss and there will be no RAPD. So in non-ischemic again what did you see? You have early and late. okay? And this non-ischemic, some of them can become ischemic. Now let us go and look at ischemic. Ischemic CRVO, now we have reached the ischemic one. What are they teaching here? This is the hemorrhagic retinopathy. They have another thing here, they are explaining it is hemorrhagic retinopathy. So complete a uh, vein occlusion if it happens sudden acute there will be marked loss of vision and RAPD here this is what you have to remember suddenly it got occluded and complete occluded that is the word here complete occlusion then uh, ma a sudden visual loss and RAPD I think these are all painless okay painless uh, loss of vision only CRVO CRAO all are painless early in this what will you see fundus massive retinal hemorrhages yeah splashed tomato appearance we already saw Yes, massive engorgement of the vein, tortuosity, congestion, massive retinal hemorrhage, splash tomato appearance, then a lot of cotton wool spots. Cotton wool spots is what? Because of the nerves, right? So you will see a lot of cotton wool spots. Then uh, disc shows edema, hyperemia. The disc also sh will show some edema and hyperemia. <clears throat> so did you understand, guys? Then you can see even vitreous hemorrhage. So this is the early stage. All this blood whatever this thunder bloody thunder tomato ketchup splash tomato whatever you're seeing is still in the early phase of the ischemic crvo then you have the late stage late stage you will see neovascularization now new vessels started developing and uh, there will be macula will have pigmentary changes chronic cystoid edema cystoid edema you have read, seen this everywhere you have seen cystoid edema they have mentioned Okay, what is the pathognomic feature of ischemic CRVO? Ischemic CRVO, they are talking about that uh, beautiful photo. Where is that photo? This one. What is the pathognomic features? How will you differentiate it from non-ischemic CRVO? So, you will have a re relative afferent pupillary defect. We said, right? They, you will have RAPD, right? Uh, you know, uh, RAPD is nothing but Marcus Gunn pupil, right? So, you will have re relative afferent pupillary defect, the pupillary defect. See, here when they put light, it is dilating. 
so that is uh, the swinging light test these people will have visual field defects see this is more serious they are having visual field defects right reduced amplitude of b wave in electro retinogram so this is normal so this b wave will be reduced in which one cr view and that to ischemic so these are some pathognomic features of the ischemic crvo what and all they will have uh, rapd they'll have visual field defects they will be reduced b wave amplitude of b wave in electro retinogram complications now what will happen if you don't do anything rubiosis iridis new vessels in on iris new vascular glaucoma because these people are developing new vessels isn't it in on the desk even on the uh, uh, what is that wait periphery nve edge is it e means so even in the they are having new vascularization so they can develop new vascular glaucoma and this is called as 90 day glaucoma within 3 months they will get because of all this uh, new new blood vessels guys are you focusing what are we looking at complications guys of what crvo so you saw rubiosis iridis uh, new vascular glaucoma 90 day glaucoma some people can get vitreous uh, hemorrhage and proliferative retinopathy okay let's move on branch branch means only the branch is affected here what will happen some hemispheric occlusion quadrantic occlusion is there small branch occlusion here they will have again retinal edema hemorrhage vision is affected only when the macular area is involved secondary glaucoma macular edema neovascularization some smaller uh, uh, things are happening things are happening but in smaller extent because it is just a branch we are not looking at this one now we let us move on to uh, management of retinal vein occlusion so what will you do here first of all you will do ocular examination and investigation so what will you do you will check the visual acuity intraocular pressure you will check you will check for new vascularization of the iris as simple as that then gonioscopy you will do to rule out new vascularization of angle angle also is getting new vascular now wow fundus examination you will do guys this is very standard check the visual acuity check the intraocular pressure check the new vascularization of the iris we already told you rubiosus iridis will happen so you check that then you check if they have some angle also is getting new vascularized then fundus examination you will check what will you see if it is non ischemic you will see some uh, tortuous vein in the periphery if it is ischemic what will you see that splash tomato okay then ocular investigations should include what should it include gold van perimetry erg erg we told you the b wave amplitude will be less so you can check that right fundus fluorescein angiography guys are you able to see fundus fluorescein angiography you will do they are saying you do that after resolution of the retinal hemorrhage then optical coherence tomography standard test these are okay you just write that then systemic examination will you, what will you check does this person have hypertension does this person have diabetes mellitus do they have heart disease dyslipidemia hypercoagulable conditions do they have etc see they saying crvo is usually unilateral other condition like diabetic retinopathy and all is bilateral but crvo is usually unilateral okay so you will see one of them one of the fundus with full tomato ketchup not the other fundus so it is crvo then uh, ocular ischemic syndrome due to carotid occlusive disease what is this oh you have to differentiate it from this one also ocular ischemic syndrome you have to differentiate it from this ocular ischemic syndrome this is a yet another thing that you should know what is this ischemic syndrome has only dilated dilated veins without tortuosity so there will be no tortuosity in that but here you have tortuosity remember in crvo tortuosity is also seen in crvo you will see tortuosity yeah this we know already great guys we finished differential diagnosis of crvo then what is the treatment treatment what will you do control their hypertension diabetes dyslipidemia hyperlipidemia and what is this uh, primary open angle glaucoma etc etc smoking should be avoided guys don't smoke okay all this we have to tell then observation and monitoring for the blood to get reabsorbed so blood has uh, will get reabsorbed we already saw right uh, so the blood can get reabsorbed uh, in uh, mild to moderate conditions looks like okay especially non ischemic crvo they are saying you can just wait and observe and in more than 50% it will resolve all uh, with almost normal vision they'll get back their normal vision that's nice ocular therapy so what will you do now now you want to intervene medical therapy what will you give intravitreal anti vegf so they want to stop that neovascularization looks like same bivacizumab that is 
A. Vastin and Rani B. Zumab. Standard things. Biva C. Zumab, Rani B. Zumab. Standard antivirus tricks you will write. Then intravitreal try AMC no loan. That is a steroid, right? That also they are giving for what to reduce the inflammation. Like that is cystoid macular edema. They want to uh, uh, reduce that. So looks like they are giving a steroid. Then you will repeat injections. Uh, then laser therapy is recommended for what? Here they are saying in BRVO if it's this persistent CME, cystoid macular edema. In that case, you can give something called as grid laser. So BRVO, you remember some grid laser, okay? Then panretinal photocoagulation. This is uh, we are looking at the treatment of what guys? CRVO, panretinal photocoagulation. You have already seen this panretinal photocoagulation. Remember, like this, if you have, then everywhere you remember those dot 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 photo panretinal photocoagulation everywhere. Actually, everywhere here, okay? These kind of dots. So remember this panretinal photocoagulation. Yes, you remember this photo. Look at this panretinal photocoagulation. And just now what you saw in BRBO, you should do grid. No, that is this one. This is grid laser. But they have put laser and here they have put panretinal. Okay, grid is here in the middle. Around the macula looks like. What did they say here in grid? Persistent CME can be treated by grid laser. Panretinal photocoagulation is generally not recommended as prophylaxis even in cases with marked ischemia. It should be performed without delay in CRBO when neovascularization develops anywhere. So when are they doing this? Only when neovascularization develops. Guys, only that time they are doing this panretinal photocoagulation. It's very similar to diabetic retinopathy. New vessels are there. Photocoagulate. Okay. I'm thinking before all this, they have removed the occlusion. What do you think? That they didn't say anywhere. There's one more terminology they are saying here, scatter laser photocoagulation. Here they said panretinal photocoagulation. This is scatter laser coagulation. Okay. Surgical therapy may be required in the form of pars plena vitrectomy. So if they have complications, then they are doing pars plena vitrectomy. Like what are the complications? If there is vitreous hemorrhage or tractional retinal detachment or epiretinal membrane. <clears throat> that time only they are doing pars plena vitrectomy. Only if there is severe complication. Looks like they are doing. Okay. So these are the complications that they want to tackle. Then what are you seeing? They are talking about some glaucoma drainage device guys. That's all. <clears throat> we are done with CRBO. Guys remember sudden loss of vision and painless condition is this ischemic central retinal vein occlusion. So only ischemic central retinal vein occlusion. Sudden yes. Sudden complete occlusion will happen right. So they are saying it is sudden painless loss of vision. Time for recap, retinal vein occlusion, you have central retinal vein occlusion and branch retinal vein occlusion. Central retinal vein occlusion, if you know, some of the symptoms will be there in branch retinal vein occlusion anyways. Central retinal vein occlusion, you have two types, non-ischemic and ischemic. Non-ischemic is venous stasis retinopathy, ischemic is hemorrhagic retinopathy. Remember, ischemic, they're telling you sudden complete occlusion, okay? So, where is the central retinal artery? Sorry, vein. <clears throat> here you have so here the blood is draining into this central retinal vein and this one got occluded so there's a lot of hemorrhage here flame shaped hemorrhages so you have uh, why all this is happening because the vein and artery are crossing and the artery has uh, atherosclerosis so artery is going to put pressure on this vein and vein is getting compressed all this will happen in hypertension diabetes hyperlipidemia polycythemia, hyperviscosity of the blood, etc. And uh, it can also happen in tumors, leukemia, raised intraocular pressure, etc. All these are the causes. So you have non-ischemic. Non-ischemic is like, uh, uh, you know, <clears throat> it's very common. Here there's only mild to moderate loss of vision and there is no RAPD. Remember there is no RAPD in this. There is superficial flame-shaped hemorrhages and that too in the periphery. And uh, you will have uh, a mild venous congestion, torticity, and superficial flame-shaped hemorrhages in the periphery. Okay, and then in the late stages, you can have cystoid edema. Cystoid edema. What is cystoid? And these non-ischemic, some of them can become ischemic. In ischemic, what will happen, guys? There is complete occlusion of the central retinal vein, so there is, um, you know, um, hemorrhagic retinopathy. Remember here there is sudden painless loss of vision 
and RAPD, very important, referent af uh, relative afferent pupillary defect. Early stages, what you will see, massive retinal hemorrhage, splash tomato appearance, numerous cotton wool spots, disc shall show edema and hyperemia, macular area is full of hemorrhages and severely edematous, you can have vitreous hemorrhage also. In late stage, you will have neovascularization, NVD, NVE and macular chronic cystoid edema. Now, coming to the pathognomic features of the ischemic one, ischemic one, you have to remember there can be RAPD, there will be RAPD, visual field effects, and amplitude of B wave in electroretinogram will be reduced. So, where do you see all these? In ischemic condition, sudden painless loss of vision. Remember, ischemic CRV. Uh, complications uh, it can go on to lead to rubiosis, iritis, neovascular glaucoma etc. This is called as 90 day glaucoma where we will see 90 day glaucoma CRVO. Vitreous hemorrhage you can see. Branch retinal veins little little of everything in central vein retinal vein or occlusion will be there. Okay. Because it's just a branch. Management. How will you manage guys? You will uh, check all the visual acuity, intraocular pressure, slit lamp examination, fundus examination, gonioscopy you will do. Check the iris for neovascularization. Then fundus fluorescein angiography you will do. Perimetry you will do. ERG you will evaluate because you know that B wave amplitude can be less. <clears throat> Optical coherence tomography you will do. Then what else will you do? All these are just checks. Then you will tell that guy control your hypertension, control diabetes mellitus, control your heart disease, control your dyslipidemia. And if you have any hypercoagulable conditions, we have to treat them. And then homocystinosis, especially in young patients. All this will are the systemic things that they want to uh, look into okay differential diagnosis should be able to differentiate from retino uh, diabetic retinopathy and ocular ischemic syndrome remember diabetic retinopathy usually will be bilateral crvo will is unilateral ocular ischemic syndrome will not have toxicity but crvo will have toxicity of the vein we are continuing with the treatment so you will treat the uh, treatment of systemic and ocular association hypertension diabetes hyperlipidemia treat uh, primary open angle glaucoma smoking should be avoided you will observe and monitor uh, in non-ischemic. Remember, in non-ischemic, you will observe and monitor because the blood can get reabsorbed, right? Remember, uh, more than 50% of CRVO results with uh, normal vision. Then ocular therapy. What are they talking here? Uh, they will give in patients presenting with marked loss, visual loss, that is ischemic. Now, if it is ischemic, what will you do? They are talking about medical therapy, anti-VEGF drugs. Bivasi Zumab, Rani B Zumab, Amsinolone, Try Amsinolone. Okay. If there is associated CME, they are giving that. Laser therapy, they are doing grid laser. If it is their uh, BARVO for BRVO for persistent CME, they are giving uh, grid laser treatment. Pan retinal photocoagulation, when are they doing? They are doing pa this pan retinal. This one is grid, okay. And this is pan retinal photocoagulation. They are doing uh, in um, uh, uh, this line is important, wait. When are they doing? It is performed without delay in CRVO when neovascularization develops anywhere. So, if there is neovascularization developing anywhere, they are trying to do pan retinal photocoagulation. Then there is something called a scatter laser, laser photocoagulation also. Then you have, uh, if there are many more complications like vitreous hemorrhage, tractional retinal detachment, etc., etc., they want to do pars plena vitrectomy. Okay. That's it, guys. This is all about. Retinal vein occlusions, CRVO mean. Okay. That's all for now, guys. Bye bye.